Can you update your RV without killing each other? We're gonna find out! Hey guys, it's Jen here with Haley Family. Brian and I decided to do a before video of our travel trailer. We have a 2008 Rockwood Ultralight 8313SS. It's a bunkhouse version. So if you take a look here in our kitchen, our kitchen is actually pretty spacious. We got quite a bit of cabinet space. We have the overhead cabinets up here. We have the lower cabinets. So what we would like to do with all of this is kind of get rid of that wood veneer look. So we're going to rough up the wood and then we're gonna paint everything white. We picked white because we think that it's really going to open up the space. It's going to feel less like a dark cave and more like a home. So in this area, we're going to paint these cabinets white. And then what we'd like to do is we'd like to take this border off here and then paint the wall a light gray color to give it a little bit of contrast against the cabinets that are going to be white. Then we're going to take all of these window balance box things off, which we took one of these off last summer. It's amazing what's hidden under there, guys. <laughs> so here, here's another reason why we want to get rid of these window balances. Look at that. I have this, this much space, guys, this much space that I can't open that door. So it's really hard to get in and out of these cabinets. Next, we have our bunkhouse and bathroom area. In this, we're gonna do the same thing. Anything that's that wood veneer now is gonna be covered with white paint and anything that's wall is gonna be covered in a gray paint. And when we go to do these renovations, we'll take all the cabinetry down, we'll not down, but we'll take the doors off and we'll paint the doors and the cabinets separate from each other so that way we don't get paint all over the hinges or anything. <laughs> Look at Paige's little note we left in here. <laughs> I thought maybe I did something funny. <laughs> <laughs> so Paige left a little, I drew that for her, I think on her birthday. <laughs> we redid the trim up here and from our original walkthrough video, you'll, you can see that it was this nasty looking, um, I don't know what you would call this color, but it's got the fabric on it and it had that composite wood and they, they glued this fabric in the middle and it was just gross looking. Um, so what we did is we took all that off and we bought this nice white vinyl. And so this vinyl is significantly lighter than that composite wood. And the really nice thing about it is when it gets dirty, you can just wipe it off. Nothing really sticks to it. It's got kind of a plasticky feel and it's shiny, but it, it'll look really nice. And I'm going to do the same thing with the bench seat here. You can see they have this cover with this just gross looking fabric. I don't know whoever came up with that, must have been on LSD or something. But they just use it to cover up any seams. So we're gonna get rid of that. we are just get out of here. We're done with that. And we're gonna put a nice vinyl strip on here. And I'm gonna do the same thing down the side and across the bottom here to hold these cushions in. Well, I'll show you what we did here. We got all of the cabinets, drawers, um, fixtures taken out of the RV. We got them sanded down, ready for uh, prep for primer. Okay, so you've probably seen before that uh, we put up the trim. I went through and filled all the nail holes and I'll go back and polish it with 600 grit sandpaper and we'll probably touch it up with a little bit of paint. And then we did the trim on the dinette um, came through the same thing um, Filled the holes. I'll come back with 600 grit um, Polish that up and uh, then touch it up with some paint and then back here in the kids area We finally built Jake a real bed so he's not laying on the floor and Then we made a nice ladder and we'll come back and we'll touch that up and then we'll get it ready for paint What about you Jane? Hey, I've been working on curtains <laughs> Curtains and blankets and covers. Okay, so we're gonna do our first step of recovering these windows. So Brian and I talked about it, and I don't think that we are going to keep these 
um, day night shades so what we'd like to do is we just like to put a traditional curtain here so what I need to do is I need to go ahead and measure the window um, I'm gonna get the length and I'm gonna get the height and then when I go and do the curtain I will add probably two inches to each measurement so that way I can do a hem so I would like to get a measurement of the window length first so now these just cover just a little bit so I'm just gonna measure the shade today because then I know for sure that I'm getting enough Okay, so this is just a hair under 38 inches, so we'll just go with 38 inches. Better safe than sorry. I'd rather have too much than not enough. And then I'm going to go from the top of this blind to the bottom of the window. About, we'll just say 25 inches because it's a little less than 25. But again, I'd rather have more than enough than not enough. So when I go to cover this, what I will do is I will measure this fabric out. I'll do 38 inches and 25 inches and then when I go to cut it I will add at least an inch on each side. So two inches to the length measurement and two inches to the height measurement. So that way when I go and do the hoop to be able to have a curtain rod go through this I'm gonna need that extra to be able to do that and then to be able to hem it up just a little bit around each side. When I was looking at cutting the fabric I wanted to make sure that I kept my pattern consistent in the room. So in the room, I wanted to make sure that all the arrows in my pattern were facing the same direction. When I looked it over, I could have the arrows facing this way, which would make everything look a little bit wider, or I could have everything facing this way, which would make everything look taller. Our next step is going to be hemming the fabric. Now, I don't own a sewing machine. I am not a seamstress, so um, and I want to do this on the cheap. So what I did was I got this stuff called Heat and Bond. So what you do is you cut the, cut the strip of Heat and Bond to the length that you need it, and then you're going to you use the iron on top of the paper liner. It adheres to one side. Then you let it cool, you'll peel the paper off, and then you're able to fold it over and hem it, basically. So this is a great time to be looking at your pattern and making sure that you're getting what you want out of it. So since I have these arrows on here, it's gonna be really noticeable if things aren't straight. So what I'm doing is I'm putting my heat bond as close to the edge as possible, and I'm going to line it up with something on like a marker on the pattern. So if you can see right here where I have a set of uh, four, five arrows, I'm just going to I'm just going to line it up with the tip of those arrows and then that pattern ends up repeating all the way across the across the fabric. So if I line this heat bond up with that when I go to fold it and bond it the other way, it's it's a lot more likely to look straight. So this is a great way for you to kind of clean up any of those cut edges that maybe weren't quite as pretty as you would have liked them to have been. And you just do like 2 seconds. You know, it's like a 1 2, it's a long hold on the iron. And then you just kind of make sure it's all lined up over here. And then you just do two seconds. One, two, one, two. Just kind of drag the iron. And then I just give it one more good go because we want to make sure everything is nice and secure. So as you, I don't know if you can see this or not, but as you peel it off, it kind of gets a little, you can see it's a little shimmery. So as I peel it off, you might be able to see it a little better. Okay, so you can see that I have the shimmery side. I took the I took the paper liner off, so this isn't sticky, it, but it is adhered to the the fabric. So then, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of fold it over. And what I am going to do is I'm just gonna kind of do one right here in the middle. And this time, you have to hold it for about six seconds. So you want to hold it a little bit longer. So see, now that is adhered. It does take a little bit of time to cool, so you want to make sure you don't like tug on it real fast or anything. Um, so then I'm just going to kind of go out each direction. Right, so I've ironed that. So now what you can see is if you turn it over, you can see that this fluffy end of the arrow, uh, you can see a couple on each of those. So it makes it look a lot straighter than what the cut probably was. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this real quick and I will show you when we are just about finished. I'll show you how I do the curtain rod portion.
curtain rod at the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the heat bond stuff along the top here. And then what I'll do is I will measure the other curtains to so make sure they like lay the same. Okay, here's the tricky part. So I have officially hemmed both sides and I had hemmed the bottom. I did the bottom first and then I did the sides. Now what I'd like to do is I wanna make sure that this panel is the same length as the other panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the panel up and I'm going to line it up with the first panel that I did. Okay, and it's okay if one is longer than the other one, that's not a big deal. I cut it on the natural seam of the fabric. So now what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that this is going to lay and hang about the same as that one. So I'm going to line them up with each other, just line the bottoms up. Make sure they're lying flat. So then I'm gonna pull this one underneath. And what I want is I want these to kind of line right up. So see, it's about right there. They're, they're lining up pretty well together. So then I'm just gonna move that one out of the way and get busy ironing. Again, this is about a six to eight second hold. All right, there we go. I'm just gonna do a quick iron on, on the panel before we hang it up and see how it looks. All right, this is the last step of um, making no sew curtains for your RV. So I put these on a, just a tension rod and we'll hang these in the camper more permanently when it is time after we have done the painting on the walls and the cabinets. But this is, this is pretty much what it's gonna look like if I have the curtains drawn. So uh, we got a lot of the doors painted, the cupboard doors. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of them. So we got them all painted up. We're in the camper here and you can see all of the, uh, the priming that we have on all of the cupboards. And then we have all the priming back here. Paint woman, paint! That's what I'm doing. <laughs> What's happening? So we have um, done quite a bit out in the camper. Let me kind of give you a little bit of a tour. So on the walls, it may not really look like it. It might not come out in the video very well, but this is a light gray color. And then um, along the back of the slide, we have done just, it's just contact paper. A really quick, easy peel and stick. Um, it's a light gray wood plank, so it kind of looks like shiplap, very homey. The cabinets are white, um, so we're pretty excited. Everything is really coming together. Um, we put LED lights in the camper. So we've been using this contact paper a lot. Unfortunately, it's not really sticking to the wall. I mean, it stuck really well the first day, but we are in Ohio and a lot of fluctuation of temperature has really made it to where it doesn't want to stick. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of peel it back and we're just going to use some spray adhesive and see if that works. Look at me! Look at me! Ah! He's weird. Walking into the camper, it's finally finished. I missed the camper. <laughs> me too, Paige. You missed the camper, Paige? Yeah. It's been a long winter, huh? But we get to sleep in the camper tonight. Okay. Yeah, I can sleep in my bunk bed. And Jakey's finally got a bed. Whoa. I bumped my head on the butt. Camper! <laughs> It's really nice. Yeah, you like it? Yeah. yeah. The like only it. thing we have left is we refinished the stove top. So when that's finished, I'll put that back on. But other than that, I think it's a wrap. We uh, made it through the camper uh, update. Still married. We didn't kill each other. We didn't sell it. No. <laughs> We're good to go. We had some, uh, some hurdles to get through, some lessons learned. One of the, uh, the, the biggest lessons was even when you do research, you can still find problems. Yeah, you know, we've, we've done a lot of renovations. We set out to do this project. We did a lot of research looking at painting cabinets and painting walls in RVs. And mostly what we found was sand, 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 and prime, prime, prime. So that's what we did. Yeah, and we didn't have any problems with solid wood cupboard doors. The issues we ran into was anything that had that veneer, the fake wood, we sanded it and then we used the paint and primer in one that the retail store suggested. We did one cupboard and it peeled. Yeah, so. yeah, we just, we did the one cupboard because we knew, we just had this gut feeling that it wasn't gonna stay. Now, this is not a knock on that paint and primer in one mm -hmm. at all because we have used that personally in our house and it is 
phenomenal. It's it good is stuff. it is really really good stuff, and it to not work. So, uh, something was going on. Yeah. We were surprised, so we ended up going back to the store and saying, yeah. "Hey, listen, this is what happened. Um, what would you suggest at this point?" So they hooked us up. They they gave us a little bit of a discount on this meanest, nastiest primer they yeah. had. It was. <laughs> It's some gnarly stuff, and it's it's stuck. So far, knock on wood. Well, that's final. Knock, <laughs> oh man, that's fake wood. That's been air. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Knock on knock on wood. It's been pretty good. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna have to see how it holds up against the children mm -hmm. and time. But you know what? All in all, we're happy with the progress that we made at this point, anyway. Yeah. The other issue we had was the. Uh, the peel and stick. So we put contact paper up. Um, I, I don't know if you can really see the wall behind us, you yeah. see curtains, but on the wall sitting behind us in one of our slides and then on one of the walls in the bedroom, we did contact paper, which looks like wood paneling. And then behind the kitchen sink in the stove and in the bathroom, we did a contact paper that looks a little bit like a hexagon tile. Mm -hmm. So we came out over the next day. It, it held up for 24 hours, no problem. 48 hours comes around and it's starting to kind of peel around some of the the edges especially where we made some cuts mm -hmm. um, so we decided to just use a spray adhesive um, just that Loctite spray adhesive mm -hmm. and we just put that just kind of right on the edges where it was starting to peel up and we've not had a problem since and yep. that was almost two weeks ago yep so far so good knock on wood again we'll <laughs> see how it goes but yeah those those I think were the two major hurdles that we had to over advice we have for people that would be doing a project like this by paint and primer you get what you pay for for sure yes yep so just take time i mean it's better to take an extra day or two mm -hmm. and do a test coat yes. and do a test area to see how it's going to stand up to time and to mm -hmm. you know normal life um, and see what's going to happen like he said you know you get what you pay for when it comes to product and i guess the other advice that we have and this is for any project not just rv makeovers when you go to do a project by yourself there's a good chance that you're going to come in over budget over time. So just yeah, understand yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, what, what are, just know that you're going to run into things. Yeah, anytime we do a project, we kind of go to the store, get an idea how much it's going to cost. And then in my head, I'm like, well, I'm just going to double that because I, I know there's always, there's always going to be something that's going to come up when you're updating, changing, yeah. renovating. And, you know, besides for paint, the other advice is try to keep it simple. Don't go overboard. Don't, you know, rip out your whole camper and start from scratch. Just keep it simple and and do what you know how to do. Um, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. We are happy to point you in the right direction. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. We're going to keep making videos. We're going to get into camping season now, so we're going to be doing reviews and you know, showing activities, telling you what we're doing, because that's what we love to do. We love to watch yeah. people and learn what they do so then we could go do it. Um, there, there's nothing worse than looking up a, you know, an adventure on the internet and that looks awesome and their pictures look great, but you show up there and it's not so good. Yeah, yeah. So we try to give you the best and mm -hmm. most realistic information possible. So, and we try to keep it family fun. Mm-hmm. Take care and we hope to see you again soon.